Or River Bend Talent brought to you by Halpin Music and Mr. Matt Van. Mr. That is Mr. Matt Van Boris right here. He's here. Oh my hey, gosh, he's he, here. He knows we actually say it. Ah! <laughs> I didn't <laughs> say. I didn't see him sitting behind yeah, me. Yeah, he's there. <laughs> Snuck up on me. Hey, thanks for the uh, thanks for the sponsorship. Thank you. Thank, enjoy. It. Thanks for the insurance. Happy to be a part of it. Thanks for that too. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Messias Insurance. I didn't say that part. Messias Insurance, and, and and I can tell you firsthand, if your motorhome burns down, he'll be at your house quick. <laughs> he was at my house quick. I can tell you that. Uh, I'm worried about you. B- big thanks to Messias Insurance and Erie Insurance for taking care of that, and, and the Godfrey Fire Department. Those guys are fabulous folks <laughs> we got another matt we got another matt in the room matt tall uh, old friend of the show oh yeah <laughs> for the longest time he was uh, our most uh, frequent guest but i think uh, i think graham pagano might have edged him out no nah, i wasn't graham <laughs> i wasn't graham he's <laughs> way behind oh he's way behind all right anyways <laughs> But thanks for having me. So we're on Friday night instead of uh, Thursday because uh, there was a line eye basketball last night, and uh, the video's on whenever you're looking at it. So <laughs> right. Right. up immediately, yeah. Right. It's on before the show's on the air. So it might be. Go. It might be. I don't know what's happening. To be I, honest. What, I we never, never do. Know. No. Never know what's happening. So so Friday night. What do we got going on this Friday night, real quick, and then we can, uh, you know. Right. The Blarney Man, Keith Shannon. 9 p.m. at Morrison's Irish Pub tonight. DJ karaoke out at Third Shoot and Borderline at Fast Eddie's. We got the Graham Band at Shea, Maryland. Then the Lady Luck Band down at the Pump House in Wood River. Ninth Street Surfers, I like that name. The Ninth Street Surfers, 7 p.m. at the Moose in Wood River. The infamous Scott and Michelle at the Moose Lodge in Granite City. The Vault at Elks Club in Granite City. And Rock Bottom at Patrick's in Granite. And then we got Nectar, 8 p.m. at the Wild E Theater. In Have you ever listened to them? That's a psychedelic 70s band. I'm sure they, you play I, them on I, your I, show. I do like Nectar. Okay. They're, uh, they're a pretty sweet band. Yeah, that, uh, You know what? Al Canal does a great job getting those old 70s bands up in uh, in the uh, Wild E Theater up there. He's got, like, Wishbone Ash. He keeps bringing all those bands I love. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> this will be uh, night two. They played uh, last night, and then they're going to play, like, twice on Saturday. There you go. So. Catch the uh, either show on Saturday. Uh, there you go. And then we got, oh, here's one of my favorites. We got Mr. T and the House Shakers. They're going to be Mr. T and the House Shakers, 8 p.m. at the Lake House at Buffalo Park. And, man, if you're a fan of Mr. T... He's probably not going to be there. Right? <laughs> <laughs> if you're a fan of the A team, it's, it's, yeah. I pity the fool. Don't go to the lake house at Buffalo Park on Friday night. <laughs> uh, I, I'm sorry. I, I'm sorry. What else was going on? Salmon Creek, 8 p.m. at the cabin at Judy Creek in Glen Carbon. Right, and they do the open mic now at the uh, Hog Pit on Friday night. That's every Friday night. Right, going every on. single Friday. That uh, we got Robert Lefty Preacher Samson. Wow. Oh, wait. Wait a minute, I think you skipped past something there. Did I? What did I skip past? Check your pages, buddy. Oh, did I? After Hog Pit, it goes to Flip Side. Oh, I did. I did. (laughs) Tri-County Rod and Gun Club. (laughs) I'm right. (laughs) The, the Rod yeah. and Gun Club. Get them uh, both in there. I, I do not hang out there, but I'm going to go there because I love, it. I, I love it. The flip, flip side. side. Then we got uh, Jack Twiston and the Skylark Brothers, 7 mm-hmm. p.m. at Cree Hands in Belleville. And a little, little known fact. Little known fact. 8 p.m. at Fletcher's in Swansea. There you go. That takes care of the Friday it night is. in the Riverbend area. Took us three minutes, 46 seconds. You know what? We're, we're cooking through it. <laughs> Why are we cooking through it? Because we got a lot going on tonight. We're cooking. Right we now. We got Flatliner coming up. We got the band Flatliner Those coming guys up. are fabulous. You yeah. Gotta check them out. Good times. Yeah. So there's a, and they, we're going to find out all about Flatliner uh, in the next second half of the hour. But we got Matt Van Boers, one of our sponsors and one of the members of, well, you were once in a band called Stubblefield. That's a right. lot of the same members are playing together, but you're not called Stubblefield, so I'm going to call you Unshaven Pastures. <laughs> I should have warned you about that. <laughs> <laughs> That's not really the name. Uh, fake yeah. news. <laughs> I don't know. Fake news. Fake news. But <laughs> the Unshaven Pastures. No. <laughs> the, uh, the, it's probably been called worse. The, so, so Matt Tall and Friends, is that what it's going to be called? I'm not no, sure. No, uh, we're... Uh, it's Stubblefield. Field. When we're all together, we're Stubblefield. It's Stubblefield. So Stubblefield is going to be... When we're bits and pieces, then we're Matt Tallenfriends. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so so 
Oh, that's, a bet, that's the most clear answer you've ever gave us on the lineup right there. I think that's, yeah, I got, you finally nailed right, it after so many visits. It took a long time to think about that. <laughs> it, was, it, it finally sunk in with me so I could share it with yeah, you. That's, that's, you. That usually, works. Usually when we ask Matt about a band, he's like, I don't know, I booked a gig, I'll get some guys right. later. Yeah. <laughs> people just start showing up. I'm always grateful when they show up, though. It's always nice that people keep coming back. Yeah. Like, oh, man. Yeah. You ain't scared if they don't. No, I'm, yeah, I'm yeah, just playing by myself. Let stuff to set up and make more money. <laughs> uh, so March 14th, down at Bluff City Grill, yep. it will be the Unshaven Pastures. I mean, it'll we be a double field. A full-on stubble field stubble band. field yeah. band. Got, yeah, got the whole thing. And I just saw you, uh, the two Matts and Bobby Etley and Joe play last weekend at Ropers. And, man, sounded fabulous, no, especially for the – Two guitar ramps and tiny little Bose system that was sitting there. Yeah. That was a lot of sound coming I think, out. I, I think when you play together for thirty years, uh, it just kind of becomes old and very natural. It, it we, was. we know each other's moves. Well, you got new moves though. You've stepped He's, up your game on I the guitar. I got new moves. Yeah, yeah. yeah You've stepped up your game on the yes, guitar playing over the years. It's about time. <laughs> My God. <laughs> Been playing for twenty years and I'm only fifteen years behind now. No, no, you you kidding me? It's fabulous. You did great before, but you really stepped it up. Yep. Uh, it makes him have to step it up. It does. <laughs> Getting older too. Uh, so, so you're going to be down there March 14th. Is there a uh, cover charge or anything that you know about? No. Or is it just uh, that's at the sports bar? Yep. That's that's the inside bar there, right behind the main bar. Down you go the through there. Level. Beautiful place there. So uh, get out to the sports bar. Bluff City Grill, March 14th for the Stubblefield Band. And then, if you miss that, you get another, you get a mulligan, we'll call it. Uh -huh. right. March 15th, you're going to be at Ropers. That's right. Is that right? Yes, that's right. Back with the four piece that night. We'll Back be the, with the four piece. The uh, Bluff City gig, we'll have a drummer and everybody. We have a full. Got the full on. on lots of original Stubblefield stuff, so. You did a lot of original stuff as a four-piece last yeah. week, because my wife uh, happened to mention it. She goes, I forgot how much I like their songs when I haven't yeah. listened to them for a while. We'll be diving <laughs> heavy back into the Eaton Crow album and some of the... Uh, oh, yeah. What is almost a classic now, but... <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it is a classic. 20 years? Uh, 20 Day years, fair? Daylight was a classic the first time I got a job and had to work and not see the sun. Yeah. It was instant classic. Right. So there, yeah. uh, so there you go. Uh, we got... So there there it is. Bluff City Grill, the full-on Stubblefield band, going to dive back into Eating Crow, do some stuff off-road, less traveled, I'm sure. Yep. And uh, how, how long are you guys playing that night? Uh, three hours. Three hours? Non-stop, I'm sure. No non -stop. Yeah, there we go. You didn't even take a break when I saw you through the other day. Three Breaks hours. for lightweights, yeah. man. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I saw it, and you looked a little... Once you, once you say to your group of guys, breaks are for lightweights, yep. nobody wants to be the guy that says, <laughs> I need a break. <laughs> Everybody's like, eh. <laughs> lightweight. Everybody's just trying to outlast each other before they know what the gig's over. But when you have a couple hundred songs to choose from, it's just a... <laughs> you just got to start playing. <laughs> well, and that was the thing, too. Not only did you not sit down and, and take a break, you only stopped the music to take a sip of water or whatever every three to four songs. You would roll one into another into another, and I'm like, oh, yeah. And a few times you got me where I'm like, oh, they're getting ready to play Dear Mr. Fantasy. Nope, I heard it wrong. I don't I don't know if it was exactly that song. Yeah. But a few times you got me where I thought it was going into one, and uh, I, it, one of them was the, uh, there was a wealthy much... Uh, Jack, Jack Row. Row, I thought you were going into another, a different dead tune. I don't remember which one now. I was like, ah, oh, Jack Row. Good one, good one. Anyway, personal sh personal stuff going over the air here. My own personal <laughs> thoughts. This is my. <laughs> I'm so Terrific. sorry to all the listeners. <laughs> Just, yeah. uh, it was a great show. Uh, I look forward to the Bluff City show. How long has it been since you played as a, as a full on band? Been a couple of years now? Yeah. 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 Yep. So we're going to call it a reunion. Yeah, we do, uh, yeah, we got the two after two years, two long years, two grueling long years apart. <laughs> Matt V's been living in parts unknown the whole two years. Uh, being Haven, just being Haven. Uh, uh, so that's uh, that's pretty awesome. And then uh, back with a four piece. And then we should also mention, if we haven't done it already, every Wednesday night, JJ yep. Thermos. Yep, and the and that's down at the East. Alton Eastgate Plaza. at the Eastgate Plaza Eastgate down Eastgate by Plaza. the uh, hockey arena. Man, has that place like really shaped up? It's a very nice years. place. Whoever developed that did a fantastic job on the whole plaza. It was no man's land for a yep. few years. There was no oh, the theater. And yeah. now I, I just happened to go down to uh, uh, the, the pool place. Atlantis moved down, mm -hmm. and I happened to be down there. And I'm like, 
there's a place to throw axes. Oh, I yeah. think you can get drunk while you throw the axes. You can. Yep, it's, you can. This is, this is crazy stuff going on. But they've really, uh, you know, it, it looks Everything nice. down there is new. They did a great job. Yeah, it's it's all new, and it looks fabulous, and I'm happy to see it full. Yeah. Not sitting empty with, with yeah. fancy lights on it. Yeah, so, uh, and the JJ Thermos is like a 5 to 8 on a Wednesday, so it's a good, easy stop by on the way home from work. Oh, yeah. Have a little food and a few drinks, and... You can get home and get to bed. I know, on a Early. Wednesday night. Saddle, that's what I like to do. Wednesday night, that's important. <laughs> yeah, it is. <laughs> it is. For me, it is. So they, uh, I, I have yet to make it to JJ Thermos. I've seen the place. Is it a restaurant? Yep. A, a yeah. full, full restaurant, full bar. Restaurant, bar, yep. Real nice yeah. patio. So when the weather breaks, they have a, just a sweet patio <clears throat> out back to you. Not, and very, most importantly, very nice people own the place. Good, good folks. You'll yeah. be supporting good people when you go there, which is important. That is very important. So. Mm. Awesome, Imagine man. you get some carpoolers there. They have yeah, park oh, we their park car. Ride. Yeah. yeah, they park there at uh, Eastgate and then uh, after work have a beer. I put flyers on the, the, the windows of the uh, <laughs> exactly. carpoolers. <laughs> get, five, old get, school. get 5% off your third drink. Yeah. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> when you mention when you mention matttallmusic.com. <laughs> <laughs> Complicated, uh, <laughs> but I'm gonna try. But take notes. <laughs> <laughs> All solid plugs. Thanks. <laughs> oh, that's cool. So that, that's been going on for a while down there now, right? Yeah, but yeah. just before uh, Thanksgiving, when Bigelow's ran out, then uh, yeah. she called me the Sunday after my last, um, after my last Bigelow gig, and said, "Hey, could you? Uh, how about it?" You sure. know what? Man. Why not? That, that was nice for you, but how sad was that to see Big Lowe's go? I know those. Oh, was, yeah, I know it was, it was done man. by a choice, of, but man, that was a lot of good times. And lots and years. lots of good friends met over the years. Yeah, uh, I really sad to see them shut down because the food too. Um, yeah. Oh yeah, amazing. Yep, they food. did a good job, and so. that business will wear you out. Though. Oh yeah, it's, mm. yeah. I, I imagine it is probably easier to go to work for somebody else than to run your own restaurant. No doubt. So just collect cool. a paycheck. So we jump into some Saturday real quick. Make yeah, sure let's we got do that. In there. Let's right. do it. So uh, going on Saturday night, which would be tomorrow. Remember, we're taping, right? All right. So, yeah, it's actually Friday, but we taped on <laughs> Thursday, right? So yeah, Lanny and Julie at the Old Bakery Brewery on Saturday. There you go. Lanny and Julie at the Old Bakery Brewery. I'm trying to find my spot again. Yeah, Here's I'm, Paul, I'm, Paul Cruda, there you 8 go. p.m. at Morrison's Irish Pub. The Skylark Brothers at Shea, Maryland, and uh, down at Fast Eddie's TBD. Those guys are exciting. Those 3 p.m. They're one of the best bands around. That's why you see them all the time playing. Right. TBD. And uh, another band that plays a lot, Borderline, 8 p.m. at uh, Fast Eddie's on Saturday. There we go. we got a comedy show going on, and mm -hmm. that's down at uh, Max Timeout, and it's got... Brian McDowell, right. Rich Brom, Matt Murtaugh, mm -hmm. and Vincent Opper. Yeah, so okay. something different going on down at a Max Time Out, doing some comedy on a Saturday night. How about that? That's pretty awesome. And we mentioned Max Time Out just so, and you know, the one listener is like, how come you guys never talk about Max? <laughs> <laughs> it's not like they need us yeah. to talk about no. it. Yeah, but that's for sure. All right. It's because, you know, when we see an ad that they're having entertainment, we put it on. It's Absolutely. not many ads on that, but so. you know how it goes. Here, here's a good one. Country line dance going on at the third shoot bar right. in Alton, and that man, those guys doing lots of different stuff and so. jam packed. The last time they did that, I think we talked to Tommy right around that time, and I seen Absolutely. some video of it, and spectacle. they are they are packing them in down we're, at third shoot. I've seen some really big it. crowds. Uh, Flatliner, the band, uh, we're going to talk to in a little bit, packed yeah. them in down there at third shoot. So yeah. Well, I, I think we're going to have Tommy back on here in the next couple weeks because he's really excited to come talk about some of the stuff that he's got lined up. So. Uh, Happy to have him back on. So if you like your country line dancing and want a boot, toot scoop boogie or whatever it is, there you go. On down to the third shoot. Mm -hmm. uh, we got ISM Records Hip Hop Showcase, and that's at the back room of the Bottle and Barrel in Alton. Right on. Picking daisies uh, at Baker's and Hale on Saturday. Excellent. Uh, thanks for the uh, suitcase drum from the Pickin' Daisies. I'm just ah. passing the word on for you. All right uh, on. <laughs> uh, Tim Levine, 5 to 8 p.m., and then Trixie Delight, 9.30 p.m. at the Pump House on Saturday night. Flip the Frog doing the franchise, and then Leadfoot down at the uh, refinery bar in Wood River. There you go. Pookie, uh, the annual Chamber Awards dinner and fundraiser at the Old Wicks Factory in Highland, Illinois. That's right. So there you go. Check out Hookie. 
You want to go on and you, you mentioned uh, the the lefty preacher earlier, so go ahead and get back to oh, work okay, on that. Yeah. One. I there want to get go. you on the right page. There we go. go. Left. Uh, we got Robert Lefty Preacher Sampson. That's a lot of name to spit out, buddy. Uh, Three to seven p.m. at the Hog Pit down in Grafton, Illinois. That sounds a little liberal, maybe. I don't know. I don't know. He's he's a, he's a lefty, so there you go. And a preacher. And a Samson and a Robert, so that's a lot of stuff to be. All right, once. left, red, green, who knows. <laughs> Warehouse Project uh, 3 to 7 at the uh, Grafton Winery on Saturday. we got the Scarecrows 9 p.m. at the back bar this Saturday evening. Lane and Julie always busy. 2 p.m. at the Foundry at uh, Public House in Edwardsville. Charlotte Street. Uh, they will be playing at the Hidden Lake Winery in Avista, Illinois at 6 p.m. Mm-hmm. on Saturday. Boulder Dash Trio, 4 p.m. And then Jason Garms, 8 p.m. at the Cabin at Judy Creek and Glen Carbon. Scott and Michelle, 5 p.m. at Clancy's in Granite City. Right, and then flip side back at it Saturday, uh, this time at Hooch and 16's in Granite City, 9 o'clock. We got Rock Bottom playing 9.30 p.m. at Patrick's Bar and Grill down in Granite City. They're doing that Friday and Saturday night. Karaoke, 8 p.m. at the Lake House of Buffalo Park. Thurston Howell, 8 p.m. at the Corner Keg in Highland. The uh, Harmon Bluegrass Band featuring that Dalton Gang, 7 p.m. <laughs> at the Auction House in Shipman. The Vault will be at the Prairie Inn in Dorsey this Saturday. Hard Drive at Rooster's Pub in Staunton. There we go. That takes care of Saturday night, I do uh, believe. Uh, is there more? Is I there more? think so. Oh, okay. I think we're down to My Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. There, Sunday. Yeah. Don't miss it. You got it. No, wow. <laughs> <laughs> this Sunday, Sunday, cross the line, 2 p.m. Uh, yeah, sorry, cross the line, 2 p.m. at Fast Eddie's Bone Air. That's right. And then the Monday Band every Sunday night at Mike's Ten Pin. Open mic every Sunday at the uh, Stagger Inn in Edwardsville. They do that on Wednesday as well. Scott and Michelle at the Pump House in Wood River on Sunday. Rockabilly uh, at the Grafton Winery, 2 to 6. Roaming Home, 2 p.m. at the Hog Pit in Grafton. And the Vault do brunch at Houdat <laughs> in Collinsville on Sunday. Nice. Lanny and Julie, 4 p.m. at Big Daddy's in Edwardsville. And then Animal Sandwich, 4 p.m. at the Lake House at Buffalo Park. Animal Sandwich. Yeah. I like it. They're trying to rip you off. I think they are. <laughs> That's all right. Okay. Uh, Monday night, we got every Monday night is an open mic night down at the Bottle and Barrel uh, featuring the Extraordinary Blues Band. Mm-hmm. Uh, this Monday, we also got Trent and Nanny, 6 p.m. at Fast Eddie's. And then uh, Michael Alvers Trio, mm-hmm. 6 p.m. at the Prairie Inn and Dorsey. That's right. Less than two minutes to go in the round, Bobby. Oh, man, that's perfect. Just enough time to say thanks to these guys. And, and, what they do. and reiterate, you. reiterate, these guys, by the way, are Matt Van Boris and Matt Tall. Uh, Matt V and Matt T, affectionately known. <laughs> That's what we go by. Or, <laughs> or just Matt. We ran around since the 7th or 8th grade, probably, right. so everyone had to distinguish us because we were always together. They said Matt, it was like, what, what? Matt V or Matt T, what's Matt. it going to be? Uh, these guys are both members, uh, these guys, again, the Matts, uh, are both <laughs> members of the Stubblefield Band and will be performing at Bluff City Grill uh, March 14th with the Stubblefield Band and then performing again the next day as a four-piece uh, at Roper's on March 15th. Got it. There you go. Well, thanks so much, guys, for taking Thank you very much. Appreciate out with it. Us and uh, catching up with us. It's been right a minute, on. So. All right. You still got to kill time. Oh, do I? Yeah. I thought, I thought you were hurrying me with that. <laughs> no. I felt like, oh, I know geez, you're nervous. I better hurry now. I, 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 I'm clammy. Oh, my gosh. I'm so nervous. <laughs> 30 seconds. I get so anxious and nervous. <laughs> All right. Well, we're, well, Coming up. You, Coming up, we're going to have the band Flatliner. It's <laughs> right. a new band, hasn't been on the show, uh, so you're going to find out all about the band Flatliner. We're going to find out about them, too. Yeah, we're well, going to find out. We did. We did. We yeah. did when we interviewed them weeks right. ago. So. so back with more uh, Riverbend talent right here on which uh, frequency at now? We're 107. On, I, we're I'm glad on, you're going to clarify this. <laughs> and, and we're on WIL now. We are. It's no longer WBGZ we're on. We're I have on no WIL. idea what's it's, going on. But. It used to be a country station, but now it's us. So yeah. there you go. You so can find the YouTube video, right? Find the YouTube all video. All the gigs. Dot org. Yeah, all the gigs there, too. There you go. All right, back with more after this. Brought to you by Alpha Music Company and Mr. Matt Van Voris of Macias Insurance. I'm Dennis. And I'm Pigpen. Another edition of Riverbend Talent. Another segment of Riverbend Talent. Yeah. Another something of Riverbend Talent we're taping in advance. <laughs> it is. It's another piece of segment, we yeah. call it. Yeah, and and we got some new, uh, some fresh blood. Oh. Uh, hopefully some new friends here. We got Kyle Greenwell. Hello, everybody. 
possibly re related to Joe Greenwell. We haven't gotten into that oh, yet. Oh, okay. We, uh, uh, I am, yeah. Joe is my grandfather. There so. we go. Yes. Oh, so that means you're probably related to Matt McGivney. I am. That's my cousin. There you go. Yes, sir. So everybody is, is somehow, uh, like, he's our Kevin Bacon, Joe Greenwell. Yeah, everybody, really yeah, everybody knows them or is connected to them somehow. Lazy awesome. Joe. Lazy Joe. Anyway, so I, I, got it, I got it out of the way right off the bat. There you go. <laughs> You'll have to take a look at his pictures his picture out there on right. the I keep pointing out to the hall because there's a picture of him out in the hall. <laughs> oh, I will, yeah. though. I didn't. Live okay. radio, black, old black and white picture. Oh, I'd love to see it. I'd love to see that. Yeah. But it says Joe Greenfield or something. Ed, uh, oh, Greenwood or something. Yeah, we've been called Greenwood and everything. Yeah. <laughs> We're used anyway, to that. <laughs> so we got Kyle Greenwell, uh, the lead singer of the band Flatliner. And we've got Nathan Crone, uh, lead guitar player and vocal, uh, backing Sorry. vocalist, uh, Herma. Harmonies. Harmonies. Harmonies uh, of Flatliner. Uh, welcome to the show, Nathan. Nice to be here. Yeah, Appreciate absolutely. You guys having us. And Nathan Crone is related to Crone. No, I don't know who he's related to. I, I got lucky with the guessing on Kyle. Yeah. <laughs> totally lucky. His family that. has a disease named after him. Well, I'm related to Kyle, so I'll take credit for his, too. You were also related, I'm related to. Joseph, you so get I credit for the disease. My wife's related to <laughs> <laughs> That's horrible. Listen, you you and Lou Gehrig, you you but no, I don't. I'm sorry. <laughs> who are the uh, who are the MIA uh, members of Flatline? There we go. MIA. We we have Randy Bland plays drums. Uh, Neil Owens, the bass guitar player, yes, also MIA, and then. Uh, Kenny Jameson? That is correct, yeah. Kenny Jameson, acoustic guitar player, a vocalist also. Yes, sir. And, and one of the interesting things, see, we I, I just we just met these guys. Mm -hmm. We just, but it's, uh, we've already got to talk for a few minutes and get to know them a little bit. What I found interesting, all of them, blood relatives except Kenny. Nice. Right? That is correct. Yep. So, so, so yeah. all of you are... are, are uh, Blood relatives are like Mary. Uh, you're married to his twin. Yeah, sister. Uh, Nathan is married to Kyle's twin sister. He is so my twin how, sister, Casey. Yeah. Now, I'm how sure often are you playing that guitar and you look over and think, "Wow, he looks hot tonight, just like my uh, wife." Never. <laughs> I don't know. I, I'll tell you what, guys. I have uh, I've caught a few one. stairs while we're up there on the stage together. <laughs> I've looked like, over and he seen. He said it's odd only the first time. Some truth's coming out now. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're close. Yeah, we are. <laughs> I love it. Uh, well, you know, you're a you're a handsome man and a tall drink of water. Oh well, yeah, thank you. I appreciate <laughs> that. That's what Nathan told me yesterday. Yeah. <laughs> so well, we hear from a lot of bands that say, you know, starting a band's like starting a family. In your case, uh, starting a band is already family. All right. <laughs> yeah, guys. I mean, um, what's really cool about our group is. Yeah, we're all we're all related. Uh, we had a lot of major influence uh, in our, our musical background, our lives as young guys, because most of our family played in bands when we were kids. Uh, that group called Ballister Crew, uh, the Amazon River Boys. Mm -hmm. Several of our family members in both of those groups, and and there were times, you know, we. Uh, as little guys, that we'd be put down for bed and we'd stay up late just to hear them practice in our basement. Yeah. And right. what a what a major influence uh, for us. And certainly made me want to uh, to be in a band. Certainly, I, I knew I wanted to sing and uh, and be a musician just from hearing them practice all the time. Right. And, yeah. and that was at like the ripe old age of what five, six years old. Yeah, it's probably six, like six, seven years old. old. Yeah, yeah. Real, real little. And but I knew uh, I, I was always impressed with the sound and 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 what I could hear. My, my mom singing, uh, Donna Bollinger, amazing voice, and ha has been around a long. Time. My grandmother, uh, Lila Lee Owens, sang in the area for, for many years, mm. uh, but I knew watching them and hearing them, I knew what I wanted to do when I was pretty young. It was wow. pretty cool. Yeah. Now, what part of the area are you guys from? Brighton. Brighton? Yep. Mm -hmm. Little small town. Right, yeah. so southwestern guys? Yes, sir. Yeah. Yep. 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 Raised in the cornfields. That's where the high school is, right in the middle of the cornfields. Oh yeah, mm -hmm. you can you can hear the cows moo when you're in math class if the windows. <laughs> yeah, <are down>. absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> so we got to give a shout out to Pisa, all yeah. those birds out there. We love y'all and, and we appreciate you guys. <laughs> yeah, we love our town. It's small. We got the one stoplight, but uh, yeah. good people. Now, did you guys play uh, instruments in school at all? I did. Yeah. Um, I don't know if you're carrying a microphone. <laughs> I, I, I carried a microphone in every now and then. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so my, my dad, like Kyle said, my dad actually played with his mom. Um, they played numerous bands, but my dad played on the road for about 20, 25 years. So yeah. That's all wow. we grew up. And it's funny, when I was little, he really wanted me to play guitar, and I just I, you know, fiddled around with it a little bit, but didn't really take it serious. I got into, well, it was my freshman year of high school, and I seen some kids practicing for a talent show. I was like, man, that's awesome. I, I think I could do what he's doing, playing guitar. And I went home and I told my dad, you know, hey, uh, hey, I, I, will you show me some chords? Will you show me how to play? He's like, wow, well, what all of a sudden got into you? 
And so I seen these kids playing for a talent show, and, and it looked awesome. He goes, I've been begging you your whole life to play. <laughs> and now some kid at a talent show, and that's what that's yeah. what it is. It's like, right. well, it's the right thing. But yeah. uh, I, I picked it up then and really got serious through high school, you know, trying to learn and, and uh, practice quite a bit. And I've been playing ever since then. Yeah, I think I, I, for me, I spent most of my time uh, – Playing basketball, baseball, and football, and kind of hanging out with the cheerleaders and stuff, you know. Right. But, but I, I was what I say though is in the early '90s when Garth came around, I certainly had a, a ton of influence from my family members. But when Garth Brooks came onto the scene, that's really when I got serious about uh, what I wanted to do. Mm-hmm. Suddenly, you're all blaming all on my room. Yes, yes, I was. <laughs> Everybody was singing that song. <laughs> Everybody, and we still do. still do, and they all still sing every word with us when mm-hmm. we when we play it. So. Now, what was the whole Chris Gaines thing, though? I mean, that was just crazy. It was a little it's weird. Like, I'm going to make an album with Chris Gaines well, now. I'm Garth Brooks, but I'm also Chris I, Baines, but I I'm not really Chris was, Gaines. <laughs> He's insane, I man. That was just to go along with the movie that. Yeah, I, I, I'm I just. Yeah, I just like to make fun of Garth Brooks. <laughs> it I, was I make fun of everybody. Yeah, it, pretty soon I'll be making fun of Nathan Crone yeah, even more than I already sure. have. He's used to that. It's okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm related to this guy, so yeah, yeah, he's, yeah, I, I he's used to it. it. You know, the, one of the family members we didn't uh, we didn't mention who's mm-hmm. sort of in the band is uh, Brian. Yep, that's my that, dad. That's so. your dad. He's the sound man for yep, the band. Yep, sound for us. Now, how nice. great is it to have a house sound man who knows what you're going for? Oh, yeah, so, yeah, that's great. Hey, hey. And it's somebody who knows what they're what they're doing and. Yeah. It's on the levels of the songs, you know. I mean, that's the thing. Is you can have a lot of people running sound, but a lot of them really don't know what they're listening for. or Can get a good mix, and most everything we record. I mean, I most everything I get back is it's rare to hear something that's off. Right, right. And, and most importantly, he knows your material. Right, right. I mean, that, that's yeah. one of the biggest parts. Yeah. Somebody knows the, the songs. Key part. And, yeah. I mean, with us singing harmony, he's constantly moving things to try to keep those three voices blended, and that's a hard thing to do. Yeah, Junior's Every getting too close to the mic. I'm going to back yeah. him off, you uh, know. Exactly, yeah. Well, you, he'll sing one or two, and then I'll sing one, and yeah. then he'll sing, and then the other guy sings. So we all switch off lead, too, yeah. and so he's constantly... Well, now, now you're going to have to go a little farther back into the country music, into bluegrass. And those guys gather around one microphone and they mix themselves. Yep. They lean yep. in, they yep. lean out, they take their bass in, they, you know, the fiddle goes up. <laughs> they, they, that, yeah. Yeah, first time I saw the Del McCurry band, I thought, this looks like synchronized swimming. Yeah. <laughs> they are moving around each other and every move is exactly precise for the sound. Yep. Yeah. For who's closest to the yeah. mic to get, you know. And, and how impressive is that? Wow, it is amazing. so it's amazing. amazing. First of all, they're playing their instruments oh, yeah. just yeah. amazingly. Yeah. But then mixing their own sound according mm-hmm. to how close they are to the mic yeah. blew me away. Absolutely. I would imagine yeah. Grandpa Greenwell had to do that a few times when he was doing them radio shows with one microphone yeah. out front. You no, know, there were several times at the house when I'd go in and uh, listen to a lot of his tapes and everything. And, yeah. and I, I mean, just so impressed with what he was able to do. And, and again, you know, another major influence on my music is, is you know was was going into his office and hanging out with him and just listening to tapes because he'd play them non-stop put the headphones on me and let me listen you know and it's great times yeah yeah really good times I can imagine yep so so after all these years of you guys growing up and your parents playing music and and you're all sort of related so you've been around each other you're all kind of in different bands. What, what what made you decide to hey let's let's get together and do this? I mean, it seems like it'd be obvious. Every family reunion, you're right. doing it. You're doing it <laughs> anyway. Yeah, it is. It's, yeah. I think it's timing is a big part. I mean, when I graduated high school, uh, me and my cousin who plays bass. We both decide, hey, we want to start a band. And so my dad and my cousin's uh, dad, my uncle Kevin, uh, they played together on the road for how long? So. They had come back off the road and it was like, you know what, if you guys are going to do this, we want to get you started in the right direction. We're going to teach you the ropes. So we actually joined a band with our dads. And uh, my other cousin, uh, Neil's sister, played with us. And uh, we did that for a few years. Mm -hmm. I ended up getting a job down the refinery back in 09. And when I started in there as an operator, you're on shift work. Mm -hmm. I pretty much gave music up altogether. I didn't play for the last nine years. Wow. In the meantime, Kyle has done all kinds of stuff in different bands. And yeah, I mean, for me, I uh, got to to, uh, to to somewhat, I guess, tour, I guess, with a few different bands and uh, go down and record in Nashville. Uh, just really experience a lot of cool stuff. Um, and then, uh, you know, obviously, I have my wife Amber, my three daughters, uh, Emma, Grace, Maya, keep me 
keep me busy. So I kind of backed off of that uh, once I got into my early 30s. Um, kind of backed away from the music scene a little bit and started spending more of my time at home and uh, wanted to be more involved with that. And just recently, you know, within the last couple of years, uh, you know, uh, really decided I wanted to do something again um, just to kind of scratch that itch, you know. And it took forever for me to convince this guy uh, to, to do something with me. Uh, in the meantime, you're kind of shuffling pieces around and just trying to have some fun. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, but you know, you know, you guys being in bands, you know that once... Once it forms and, and everything clicks, you know when it's right, and we, you know when you've got the right, uh, the chemistry's there, the formula is correct, and you know when it's good, and that's when it's time to, to kind of hit it and, do, and have some fun. Mm -hmm. And that's what we're doing right now. We, we've nice. got it locked in, and we're having a great time. You know? I, All right. I told him if I ever go back to a straight day job, I'd think about it. And then I finally got off shift work and got to a straight day job. <laughs> so I was like, okay, hey, I'm good to go. In the meantime, my, uh, my cousin Neil, he's... He works down there as an operator, so he's still on shift work, mm. which also plays to the reason why we don't usually play a whole lot. Mm -hmm. right. We try to give mm -hmm. him at least one weekend off a month because he's working every other weekend as it is. So we try to stick to one weekend and yeah, that gives weekend. him a free so, weekend. And we all, like Kyle said, you know, my wife Casey and, and my kids, it's uh, it's really hard trying to balance things sometimes. And when you're doing it every weekend, I don't feel like we give them enough attention. Yeah. If we play more than that, so to be able to Shh, my wife's still get around. <laughs> yeah. My wife like, is go? listening right <laughs> now. I'm gonna have to hear this when I get home. You know, yeah. that? they get it. They know. Yeah. Why do you get it? Yeah, <sighs> we all got That's multiple great. kids and, and, and jobs, so it it all keeps us busy. And this is kind of the fun thing that we do. Nice. All right, well, flatliner is the fun part, huh? That's a great time. It's the getaway. Yeah. Kyle brought up Nashville, though. Yeah. So we gotta know more about what would you do down there. Well, actually, so I went to Nashville, and uh, I have, first off, I guess I should say I've got a couple of really good buddies from the area, uh, one in Tommy Carlos and another one, Charlie Brown. Okay. Uh, great songwriters mm -hmm. and have had a lot of success down in Nashville. Uh, and and i got to say that anything that I've ever gotten to do was nothing really, anything that I ever accomplished myself, right. but uh, was able to uh, make great friends with those two. And uh, they brought me down there and introduced me to some really great people, uh, great songwriters, great musicians. Uh, through the process, I was able to record an album down there. Nice. I believe it was, uh, it's been about six years ago. Right. Um, but uh, made great friends. Uh, still uh, talk to a lot of them. Uh, Charlie and I are best friends. Uh, he's certainly my best friend. And I, I, I do, uh, I keep in touch with Tommy as much as I can as well. But uh, Charlie and I still get together. We write on occasion, on the weekends. And um, uh, actually, he's... He's going to be uh, doing some really cool stuff this year. I don't know if I'm allowed to say anything about it yet, but um, <laughs> so on, I'll be careful. On, I'll put the brakes on there. But <laughs> but yeah, uh, you know, Nashville, the greatest city in, in, in the country. Uh, I do Nash plan Vegas. to live there. Nash Vegas. <laughs> love it. Uh, nice. I, I would love to go, back, go there and live uh, sometime soon. But uh, because of the great friends I made, though, I did have some opportunity down there. I had mm -hmm. a really good time. He's, you seem like an East Nashville kind of guy to me now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm an East Nashville kind of guy. And so what was the name of the album? Yeah. Uh, the album was called uh, If Only One. And, and it was put out just under Kyle Greenwell? It was, Kyle Greenwell, yes. Uh, yeah. Titled, oh, it's wow. actually on Apple Music, Amazon. Okay. It's out there nice. everywhere, you know. So. Nice. Yeah. Uh, I'll promote that stuff. Yeah, yeah, you know, know, yeah, no, I had a great time, and uh, you know, uh, Charlie and I wrote uh, for that for that album probably for pro at least a year, maybe even close to two before uh, before we actually went down and, and recorded. Charlie produced it for me. My nice. engineer's name was uh, Kenny Royster, Nashville. Mm -hmm. uh, wow, he's done a lot of work with some really uh, great artists. Uh, most recently, Luke Combs. Uh, actually recorded in the same studio, used the same mic even, which was, was really cool because um, I'm a big fan of his, but um, just had some really cool opportunities. Mm -hmm. Really really been blessed, man, and uh, very fortunate to have met a lot of the folks that I've met, and you know, Charlie and I will be lifelong friends, Tommy, same thing, you know, yeah. so, yeah. Both their records, I've heard, that sound really good. Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah so. Uh, they are amazing, amazing writers, and, uh, and actually, uh, both have... Uh, have talked about uh, Flatliner doing some of their material. And, nice. And we discussed that as well. So you'll probably be hearing a lot of the stuff that they have penned uh, real soon from Flatliner. So. And, and there's a possibility that Charlie Brown might sit in with Flatliner one night if he sure. just has to show up. That's right? a very real possibility, actually. <laughs> yeah. Yes, it is. Yes, yeah. it is. So that's cool. You never know who might be playing with Flatliner when they never know. You never know. It's always a party. Yeah. It's always a good time. Right. So yeah. make sure that you get to a Flatliner show very soon. <laughs> we got a couple 
coming up, we were going to talk about uh, one at the uh, pump house on the 13th and uh, then wild pickings on the 14th, right? Yep. So, so uh, the, uh, you know, you said earlier that the, the the big thing for you guys is the show, which was what it should be with the band. You know, a, a lot of times, you know, there's the right and there's the recording, but the show is where it's at. Yes. And, uh, y you know, when, when you guys go out there, you know, what do you do? You, you get psyched up in the back room to... <laughs> oh, <know>? yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, <laughs> Come on, man! Come on, you can take me, son! <laughs> yeah, something the like that. just stand cool. there, but he's real good at doing the show, so... <laughs> You know, uh, that's his forte. Yeah, it is. You know, I, I think uh, because the guys in the band, uh, you know, I, I love to say this part because I think it's absolutely true. But you know, the talent that's in the band, you know, with Kenny and Neil and Nathan and Randy uh, doing their part and bringing what they bring. You know, I'm a, I'm the guy that uh, I sit around and I, I've got an acoustic guitar that I can pick on. But I'll be, but I'm not afraid to tell you guys that uh, I don't play one at a at a show uh, because I'm not fluent enough with one. But something that I uh, feel like I bring and, and to at least earn you know my keep, uh, I, I do believe and feel like I put on a pretty good show. I think it's mm -hmm. so important to do. Uh, so I'm I'm real big on that part of, of doing my job, which is the front man for the band. You know, so, right? Yeah. I'm not surprised by that because you know he brought up Garth Brooks. Yeah. And, and when I think of Garth Brooks, I, I really think he kind of changed that dynamic of country music. Those guys standing with you know Johnny Cash would do this, but that's about it with his acoustic. Where Garth, he was well, he, saw you he was everywhere. everywhere. He was running around like Bruce Dickinson from Iron Maiden. You you know what I mean? He wanted to be Chris Gaines the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's what it was. He wanted that rock and roll feel going on, you know. Yeah. And this guy, I'll tell you, Nate. Nate will tell you. Uh, I mean, the, the amount of times that that wireless mic I use. I mean, I don't know how often it feeds back, but there's been plenty oh, of times yeah. because I get all crazy. He and goes every you know, place but. you can imagine. So. Mm -hmm. That's the same thing. <laughs> I don't know about it. No. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm constantly what are you going doing? up going, hey, hey, you're yeah. going too far. Get back yeah. here. Come back a constantly having to reel me back in. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm really good. Mm. Oh, man. So, so you guys played your first gig, what, back 2018? That's, that's, two, that's kind of when yeah. Flatliner uh, got started and then did it in your hometown of Brighton up there at the yeah, 4th of the July. Cool how did that? How did it go for a first gig? I was nervous as all get out. Yeah, that was cool. And I remember him telling me before, "Hey, don't be so nervous. Are you gonna puke like?" <laughs> like no, man. I just haven't played in like ten years. I mean, it's, you know, it's a, I just it's need a to know which way the restrooms at. Yeah, so. you know. and I know everybody here, so no, don't be nervous, right? It's like it was. It was a. It was a fun experience. It was. I, I mean, mean it, for it, the first show, I think it went really well. Yeah, I thought the show um, went well, and you know, there were some nerves for sure, and, but. You know, those really never go away altogether. I mean, you still get in front of a crowd. You still get the uh, you know, butterflies in the stomach every now and then. You know, mm -hmm. uh, you know, especially when you get in front of a really big crowd, it, it really kicks in. You know, but um, <laughs> the guys they they performed well. They did a great job. Um, and um, I mean, it was really looking back on it uh, from then to where we are now. I, I really wasn't sure what we were kicking off, but uh, it's been an awesome ride for the last couple of years and. To see where we're at now, from that point, uh, you know, you'd think we've been playing together for 20 years, you know? Right. It's cool. Right. So I imagine you waited till after the show to have some burgoo soup, right? <laughs> hey, that's some good stuff. It, it is about burgoo, man. I love I don't that. Have it's it all awesome. The time, but it is really good. And that is I love burgoo, man. Yeah, yeah that is. Hasn't had it. I, I encourage you to go try it. Yeah. Oh, no, it's amazing. <laughs> it's good stuff. Yeah. You ever been caught on the wrong side of the Betsy Ann parade and you just want to get across? <laughs> you know, I have. I'm just saying. I think I have it, but I, yeah, I'm pretty sure. I, I had it happen to me where I just gave in and watched the parade because yeah. I was trying to figure out how to get around. Get I'm watching. Like, I was, I'm going to hurry. You know what? Forget it. I'm just going to watch. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> so, uh, right now, you guys mainly doing uh, cover material? Are you doing some originals? What are you guys doing? Pretty much just mostly covers. Mm -hmm. um, like Kyle said, we got a few things that we're looking at trying to do some original stuff, but because we've only been playing since 2018, you know, trying to get into places and get our name out there we knew that we had to pretty much learn covers to try mm -hmm. to get into that those areas so now that we've kind of done that we've gotten a little bit of a rotation of places that we're doing you know probably this year maybe next year to start working on some of these originals yeah, yeah i think what happened with us i mean you know just uh from from the start uh it was kind of uh you know we, we talked about it previously guys but trying to figure out okay so 
uh, what's our identity? Mm -hmm. You know, we love old old country music. You know, Merle mm -hmm. and you know Johnny and all of them. You know, we love that. Willie and um, Waylon and the Boys. Yeah, you know, we love that stuff, and we and we love that '90s country. You know, uh, Tim McGraw, Garth Brooks, and go on and on. Uh, most mostly though, because of our group and the ability that Nathan and Kenny have with the uh, the harmonies and stuff. You know, you focus on stuff like Restless Heart, Diamond Rio, and all that stuff, which is our uh, our niche, I think. You know, but but you have, you know to be relevant. Now, right now, we also know we got to play some some top forty stuff. So, at a Flatliner show, you're going to get a pretty good mix of all that, along with some Southern rock, and along with even some some eighties rock. You know, we kind of mm -hmm. mix it all together. But, you know, but to answer the question, though, yeah, I, I think this year, I think the first two years, we were really trying to establish, okay, what is Flatliner? Let's get our identity. I think we have that now, and I think we can focus on that original material this year will be a good year to really start to, to put some of that out. Mm -hmm. So I, I would say uh, mid to late uh, 2020, you're going to get some original material from nice. Flatliner. Nice. Yeah, and, and then once you get start getting that out, you know, when you got your little bar rotation, you're doing mm -hmm. your circuit, you start sprinkling those things yep. in. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And, and as soon as I'm, I'm going to teach you a trick that a band called Mama's Pride taught me. They said they had this in the 70s. Every time a club owner says to you, hey, that fourth song in that last set, who was that? And you know it was an original. You just say, oh, that was Cole Swindle. <laughs> or you, you just, you, you, they, they used to always say it was Three Dog Night back yep. then. And they would say, well, that was Three Dog Night because nobody knew. Speaking of Cole Swindle, you took your name from him, not Kevin Bacon? <laughs> oh, that's great. I'm well, just asking. <laughs> I, I think there was probably some influence from both, uh, quite honestly, because I love the movie. The that's movie for sure. was good. The yeah. second one I didn't like. <laughs> the, 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 remake, the remake was not that. Who, who played Kevin Bacon in the remake? I, I can't even, even tell know. you. Was that I've not seen the remake. Yeah. Didn't know probably that his cool. cousin. I was hoping right? Dwight Yoakam, because then I'd go see it for now. Hey, Dwight's a great actor. Been, yeah. Dwight he really is the is. best actor. He's awesome. He is. He's He's my, Sling Blade. My second favorite uh, band argument in cinema is Sling Blade. Yeah, right? absolutely. Well, I don't want to go porch to porch. What we need is a manager. What we need is a PA. You know, they just sit there and argue over all of the, and that's a, great. That is a fabulous piece of cinema right the there. The outside scene. Anyone awesome. who's been in a band has had that argument. Yep. <laughs> yeah, at least once or twice. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah, we did get we got the idea though from uh, from Cole Swindoll. Yeah, we we heard the the song and thought, you know, it, it's it's kind of a cool cool tune and a just kind of a cool name. You know, it's not the Flatliners or Flatliners. It's just Flatliner. You know, so we feel like it's pretty unique and kind of cool. Got a cool yeah. sound to it, feel to it. You know. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Did you guys Google search it after you uh, come up with I, it? I, I did. I yeah. know I did. One of the guys that was in, in the band uh, since since stepped away, he he kind of came up with Kyle. I think they. Uh, yeah, Frank was Anthony. Stolen some stuff. And yeah, I met with Frank. Frank's a drummer in the area, and Frank uh, Frank actually played with Hicktown for a long time. Hmm. Uh, but Frank and I met, and uh, we got to talking, and um, we just kind of. We're, we're throwing some things out, and that's where Flatliner came from. The song was uh, in the top ten at the time on the radio, mm -hmm. and we'd both heard it, and uh, we thought, man, Flatliner sounds pretty cool. Yeah. So, yeah. so that's what we came up with. That's cool. It's it's tough to come up with a band name these days, and that's why I bring up Google, because you know we hear bands all the time going, well, we had this name, and we searched it, and there's ten of those bands, so, you know. It's the showstopper. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, there that's are, what they say. There are five other Flatliners, two in the Philippines, one in... No, I'm just making that <laughs> I know there's a punk, there is a punk band. I think they're punk band. Yeah, they are. They're, 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 they are called Flatliners. Flatliners. Oh, okay. Yes, yeah, they, they are. They have a lot more followers than we do. They do. They're out <laughs> there. They're, and they're, they're in the punk. Because we look, but yeah. I, they're kind of like I'm techno or something. They're Canadian. I looked them up. Who yeah. knew Canadian punk was so yeah. big? <laughs> it's huge. I might be mistaken, but I'm pretty sure it was Canadian. <laughs> I think Kevin Bacon's related to him. I, I'm just picturing, oh. like, you know, usually punk rockers are kind of angry, and, like, Canadians are so friendly. Like, how do those two mix? Like, you know? <laughs> yeah. That's true. That's a good point. Think about it, Canadian bacon. I'm oh, just hey, that's good. <laughs> There's connection. I, I think Kevin's their lead singer, isn't he? Yeah, I'm pretty sure. I love Canadian. He's bacon, connected to everything, say. Kevin Bacon. He has musical <laughs> talent. So, so after two years of gigging, what what was the worst gig? Like, what was the the weirdest position you found yourself in, or the most like, what are we doing here? I won't say the name of the place, but <laughs> okay. there was a place in St. Louis that we played. We've only ever played it one time. And I couldn't hear a thing. Uh, yes. Monitors are a big uh, thing. That's you know, always so terrible. Playing and, and when you don't have good monitors or you got feedback, it was just one of those nights for me. And because we do a lot of harmony, I couldn't oh, hear where man. I was at on things. And if you don't sing, it sounds like half the band quit. Hmm. So I had a really rough night yeah. playing this particular venue. And 
I, I'm not upset that they haven't called us <laughs> which may have been <laughs> in due to the performance. <laughs> <laughs> may have been due to the fact yeah, that I the mean, we couldn't use the uh, monitors yeah, that I mean, night. Uh, right. We normally use in-ear monitors uh -huh. instead yeah. of floor wedges, and you can hear so much better. This particular job, we didn't take those over. Oh with us, man! They had a house PA system, yeah. and uh, it just it man. wasn't a good fit. So if you're a really good player, in ear monitors they're they're yeah. so oh, crystal clear. But oh, yeah. if, if you make mistakes like I do, you hear those mistakes <laughs> yeah. so good. Oh, we do nothing's yeah, lost do. in the yeah. room. You know, if you yeah. make a mistake in the room, you kind of get lost in the room. <laughs> yeah. In the in ear monitors you're like, oh, I heard that so clear. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 And on the flip yeah. side, if you forget them, you're in big trouble. Right, guys, because yeah. <laughs> yeah. you're used to that. You know, just give me a wedge. Yeah. I'm, I'm good. And, uh, I, I, I really do like the in ear monitors uh, mm -hmm. for getting the mix perfect. It was uh, this band was the first band I've ever played with that we used those, and mm -hmm. kind of had you know back ten years ago really wasn't a big thing. But no. we started this, and everybody's like, "Oh, you got to go to this. You got to try this." And once you get used to them, it's it's a hard thing to not have mm -hmm. to go back to floor wedges. It's, it's, right. it's, it's almost good if you're if you're don't always have them. If you play at places that might have wedges, it's good to practice with wedges sometimes. Where we do that, where we'll have a couple practices with in ear monitors and practice with wedges a couple yeah. times because you know as as fun as the in ear monitors are, man. If you're used to that and then you don't have it, it's going to feel rough. Oh, yeah. Yeah, uh, I, I would always make a purpose of mixing up the, my studio every night again too. If a band gets too comfortable, you know what? Switch drums, go to that end. Uh, just because it, it throws you off a little bit, you know, because when you, you're used to playing one room with one sound and you go out on stage and it's a little different, yep. it can throw you yeah. off. So absolutely, uh, those in ear monitors are <clears throat> they're great. <laughs> well, they were, yeah. All right, so what about the best gig? <clears throat> oh man, we've had so many. Um, None of them really, none of them really popped to you like, man, you know what, we played a BP fit, no, I don't know. You know what, I, I have one in mind that actually does, uh, that, that does come to mind where I felt like the sound was there, we were in the pocket, um, the crowd was amazing, um, it was in Prairie Town at the World's Fair uh, that we played. Um, man, the crowd was electric and uh, as far as our sound goes, I can honestly tell you that uh, it was the clearest I've ever heard, and I've been in doing this for a long time, but the clearest that I've ever heard uh, at any gig that I've ever done in my life. And uh, I, like I said, I think it, we were in the pocket. Everything was tight. It sounded it sounded great. crowd was loving it. It was just, just a cool place. Nice. I'd love to be back there again this I year. I definitely, that was a great job. Yeah. Um, we opened for Confederate Railroad not long ago. I thought that was a really good mm -hmm. job, too. Oh, yeah. Uh, yep. Good one, too. Uh, Hillbilly Off-Road. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. Hillbilly off Illinois. Yeah. So they nice. had them out there, and it was, that was fun doing opening for them. Oh, yeah, the Hillbilly yeah. Off-Road. had David yeah. Allen Coe out there. We, we talked about mm -hmm. that show, I think. Yeah, yeah. get your ATV, <laughs> you know, ride that around and yeah. jump off that, come up on the stage and <laughs> sing a few songs, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. uh, I played at those dirt bike fun. tracks, and it's like it gets dusty. Yeah. I remember the first time I played a dirt bike track then I saw a truck go by and spray the dirt and I was like oh thank you mm -hmm. like they just put out a little mist to help kill that dust yeah. that you're playing like <laughs> yeah it's hard to breathe is there a sometimes. smoke machine yeah. no yeah. that's dust it wasn't that no. bad that night we it was it was okay uh, yeah well, Brandon's a great guy though he owns it one who owns it out mm -hmm. there. awesome Great, great host for us. Yeah, I, you know, I always love going to, uh, you know, to uh, Game Six Honky Tonk Joint St. Louis, just because, again, um, you know, the crowd, the place has a great reputation. Uh, so, you know, not to give us too much credit, you almost always have that built-in crowd there, nice. and and they love country music. Those folks will sing along with anything that you pull out. It can be old country, new country, but they know their country music. And so I, we love going there. And Ryan's a great owner, does a great job uh, booking great bands and and uh, bringing in good talent from the area. So I'll tell you what, sound wise, honestly, uh, third shoot too. Right. Uh, I told Tommy last time we mm -hmm. played there. Out of all the times we played there, they, to me, they have the most consistent sound. Mm -hmm. about the room I don't know but nice. it just always is really clear when I know that there. they put a lot of work into that place yeah. that place is yep. nice yeah great right. place and you guys will be uh, down at Pump House on the 13th that'll be the first mm -hmm. time we ever played there yeah. first time playing there yeah uh, okay mm -hmm. that, that's a nice stage too they've got their own in-house PA and they they uh, they work pretty hard down there at it and that's on uh, February 13th and then the very next day Valentine's Day March Oh, March, I'm yeah. sorry. Yeah, did I we're say February? Well, I, yeah, we're not in February anymore. <laughs> yeah. March 13th, yeah, uh, uh, March uh, 13th at the Pump House, March 14th at Wild Pickens. Yes, yes sir. And that's a nice place, too. That's always a fun uh, place. We've to also play. never played there. We, we've been booked it a few times, but uh, I think both times that we were scheduled to play, 
I think it was rain out. Rain delay. Yeah, yeah. We had weather yeah. issues. I think for the first time it was just too cold. Yeah. They and then the second time they... we had rain, so he's. I know he Todd's built a new Tell them facility out there. Tell them okay. put you indoors. They can do that now. They can. Yeah, they no. can put you indoors. Tell me it was me when he canceled again. So. No, no, nice. They can, it, it's we'll crowded. To it. That's what I, I've, I've heard. I've heard it. Uh, <laughs> my buddy, one of my buddy's bands, Hooky, played out there a few times. Oh, great band. Those guys are great. Uh, great band. We yeah, played that, yeah, I love those guys. They they played outdoor a few times and went out there one time. It was too cold and they shoved them inside. I stood outside and listened because it was so crowded in that place, <laughs> but it was nice that it didn't get canceled for yeah. weather. Right. So mm -hmm. Yeah, awesome. because of weather. Yeah. yeah. So no, we're looking forward to both of those. There you go. So March 13th at the Pump House, March 14th at Wild Pickens. That is Flatliner. We're talking to Kyle Greenwell, the lead singer, Nathan Crone, lead guitarist. Uh, we got a few other people missing. Tell us uh, how if, if people want to find out, uh, you know, check you guys out, where should they go? What's the easiest way to find out uh, about Flatliner? We're all on Facebook, so uh, if you go to facebook.com and uh, forward slash the Flatliner Band, find us there. Just search, search <clears throat> Flatliner Band. Yeah, you type right in up. the Flatliner Band, they should mm -hmm. bring up all mm -hmm. kinds of stuff. Um, you guys got an old-fashioned website, right? Huh? You guys got yeah, an old-fashioned we website. An old-fashioned website. Uh, yeah. Old you know, remember those things? I don't things? know that a lot of people go to I go to it. What we use I go it to it. The most <coughs> is booking. Yeah. It's just another piece of that. That puzzle will say, hey, we're, we're on the right level, mm -hmm. and, yeah. and uh, to have that professionalism. So Absolutely. we do a lot of stuff through mm -hmm. there. Uh, we post some uh, events on there, but mostly everything we post event-wise is going to be on Facebook. Right. You sell those fancy hats you're wearing on there? We do. Mm -hmm. uh, we and, just got those. We got shirts. shirts. We've been uh, trying to get shirts merchandise. Too. We've got, got a lot one. of requests for the stuff. So. I don't know where the camera's <laughs> at, but there's a shirt. So Thank you for to, the uh, shirt. Yeah. Get into it. We've got tank tops. we got hats. we nice. got uh, what about the uh, coming soon? The other social medias, Twitter, banana Instagram. Hammocks? We are on. We're working Twitter. on the banana hammocks. Uh, I believe that's flat, <laughs> flat flat liner liner. Uh, <laughs> Instagram. <laughs> yeah. Flatliner band. You can find us on there too. Nice. So we we try to post everything that we can. Probably Twitter the least amount. Right. YouTube channel. Um, we do have a YouTube channel. Uh, we don't have a whole lot of subscribers on there because it's probably one of the things we haven't hit. Real yeah. hard yet. It's right. coming. Even, we're we're it's so used to, keep to up posting with it on Facebook yeah. all of our videos that it's yeah. just kind of a go to. And it's like, oh yeah, we probably need to post this on YouTube and then link it. Yeah. So it's we're trying to, to get more to that direction so we get across all the media. Yeah. Like, Full time job keeping up is. with all that social it media. Is. It yeah. is. It's a lot of stuff making videos, making promos. So there you go. You can check them out. The web, what's website again? www.theflatlinerband.com. Theflatlinerband.com. Yep. Uh, search uh, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Instagram, all of these social media places. They got the YouTube channel, so easy to find. Flatliner. Uh, you want to check them out on March 13th. They'll be at the Pump House. March 14th, Wild Pickens. So thanks so much, guys, for coming yeah, in and it. hanging out with us. Uh, yeah. anything, anything else you want to promote or want to talk about? Guys, just want to want to thank you for having us. For sure, it's been a pleasure. Um, if I, if I could, just real quick, just throw a shout out real fast to my dad, Rodney Greenwell, too, my mom, Donna Bullinger, again, uh, all of our relatives. Uh, most recently, uh, uh, my, uh, my stepdad, Jim Might, who has passed, also had a big influence uh, on our lives, played with Amazon River Boys. So just uh, throw something out there for yeah. you as well, man. So. Yeah, definitely. We do have and, uh, shows coming up over the summer. Yeah, yeah, bring that. Macoupe County Fair, we'll be playing that this year. Nice. And then uh, we got another, probably mm -hmm. the biggest show we've booked yet is yeah. uh, opening for Kane Brown and John Party, Chris Lane, a few others are going to be there. Um, that is June 27th, 2020. In Kadot, uh, It's Wisconsin. in Kadot, Wisconsin. <laughs> Make that trip. Fest. Nice. Um, so we're, we're going to be playing one of the side stages right next to the main stage. Nice. Kind of playing in between the, the big bands, so that's really exciting. That I is. played up in Kadot at the Cheese Fest. Not yeah. really, no. no it's not <laughs> known for it. Cheese and beer, that's it. That's <laughs> all they've got. Cheese, beer, and country music. And country music. Lived there, there 10 years, go. that's it. Nice. Yeah. Nice. So that's cool, man. Now, that's a, that sounds like a big show. Yeah, there should be a lot of people. <clears throat> that, that was one of those, like, I, I put out emails to every place you can probably imagine. Hey, mm. you know, book us and look at us. You know, try to, try to get you out there, get the name out there. And that was one of those I saw. I typed in country festivals, and I just happened to come up, and I thought, well, we'll never get this. <laughs> I put in, and it was probably four or five months later, I think. Yeah. I finally got, it. I got an email, and it was yeah. very short and sweet, and just said, we got a stage for you. You guys want it? Nice. I'm like, uh, you guys want to do this? I thought, logistically, you can't get you know, five or six guys in a band and, and a sound guy and, and everybody available on the same weekend to go to something like that. And right. It's 12 hours away, I mm -hmm. think it is. Yeah, uh, it's a good little drive. So it's like staying overnight. It's mm -hmm. a kind of first road trip thing that we're nice. doing. So yeah. it, it all worked out. Everybody got the weekends off. So we, so 
So let's roll with it. We do get a lot of requests from Ohio, Indiana, a lot of, I mean, even New York, mm-hmm. Pennsylvania, just kind of seeing a lot of different stuff coming in on the social media from, from several uh, areas and places. So nice. Kind of exciting. Well, yes. it, the website looks great. So, yeah. Appreciate Thank, it. Thank you. you. Good job. All right. Well, I guess that's it, Pig Pen. That's it, man. Thanks so much to the uh, members of Flatliner. Again, Kyle Greenwell, Nathan Crone, uh, Missing in Action, Randy Bland, Neil Owens, and Kenny Jameson, and they are the members of Flatliner. Yes, Thanks a lot, guys. Thank All you. Right. Thank you, gentlemen. You're Appreciate listening to uh, Riverbend Talent, brought to you by Halpa Music Company and by Mr. Matt Van Voorst of Macias Insurance.